y'all. So this is going to be the start of the, the latest vlog series that I'm doing. It is May 10th, I believe, Wednesday. And I have finished one book since I last talked to you. The second in the People You Meet on Vacation uh, the second Emily Henry book, and I'm going to give you some of my thoughts about that. But then I also wanted to, I don't know, be kind of upfront and say that lately I'm kind of, I don't know, discontented, especially with I, if you know, I've got my MLIS in December of 2021 and for the past couple months I have been looking for a library job especially because my specialization and what I want to do is um digital preservation and be like a metadata librarian and especially like my really long-term goal is to either work for or start a archive like the transgender digital archive but for disabled folks just because I don't feel like there's a resource like that if you've never seen the Transgender Digital Archive, I really recommend checking it out. I'll link it in the description. But I've just been constantly faced with like no opportunities here in my like area. I have reached out to so many different, well, there's not that many. There's basically three institutions that can hire librarians here, two local public libraries and one academic library. And no one, I've gotten many declines um, and no one's interested in any volunteer or internship opportunities. And have a few folks have told me that I just don't have enough actual like library hands-on experience, but then there's no means of gathering it. And then another librarian has told me, that, no, my education, I I um, graduated from UIUC, which is like a really competitive program, should be sufficient, but I, I don't even know. And like, it's really frustrating because I, one of my like, not fail safes, but one of my things I'm thinking about is to apply to the PhD program at UIUC, um, just because specific grant that the Transgender Digital Archive got to be created is a seed grant that has not been awarded to folks with non-PhDs. <laughs> Oh, I'm dreaming like so big, it's so stupid. And Jerry wants to go on the patio, lots of cat drama right now. But um, yeah, so I'm just feeling discontented and then I'm feeling like lots of like identity issues um, just because my workplace loves calling me lady and ma'am. And I'm like, I've put my pronouns and my preferred honorific everywhere and um, I'm not a lady or a ma'am. I might look feminine. And Jerry's frustrated too, but uh, I am not actually a woman. <laughs> anyway, deep breaths. So, People You Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry follows Poppy. She is a travel journalist. Uh, she started off by writing a travel blog, but at the start of the book, she's working for a big company, kind of like Condé Nast. And so she and her friend Alex have been going on travel vacations together every summer since they were in college. And the novel starts 13 years since their first ever vacation, if I remember right. The novel does this thing where it flip-flops back from the previous summer vacations to the current time frame, which I think is like pretty cool. I like it when there's time jumps, even though I know it can be hard to, to do correctly. Anyway, at the start of the novel, Poppy, you can tell that she um, is discontented in her current job. She feels like, you know, the passion that she felt for everything when she was a travel blogger it just feels different a little bit more artificial and she first and foremost misses her friend alex and um, it's clear at the start that her and alex haven't talked in two years following this event that happened when they were in one of the, i don't remember the exact place but they were in a um they were visiting an area and so 
you know, that is the premise of it. Um, and I don't want to say too, too much more because it's quite easy to tell what may or may not happen. Um, but I thought that this one actually read better than Beach Read. I felt that it had a little bit better character development and that it took its time and it was really cute still as well. So yeah, I enjoyed it and I intend to carry on with Book Lover. It's not Book Babe. I just love, I love repeating sounds and repeating like patterns, like, like BB for like book babe um and yeah i just love echo location it's like one of my stems um i think that for the rest of this week i'm going to continue with the physical books i have been reading and then as far as audiobooks go um the uh, black love and some matters has not returned to me yet from the library so the plan regarding audiobooks is i found a bunch of the books that i at one point requested on netgalley but never read to be uh, available in audiobook format through my library and i am going to try to get my netgalley uh rating back up so that is the plan and i will update you as i go and here's to hoping that i feel more contented how are you doing i'm sure everyone's doing all over the place plus we got some like weird work news all over the place as well so when it rains it pours my eyes are looking two different colors extra today <laughs> i feel like it anywho talk to you later jerry wants to go on the patio So I'm coming to you on a bit of a more upbeat note than I did last time. It is Saturday the 14th and on Friday I realized that the amazing Jason Reynolds is going to be to give a talk at um, one of the local bookstores here. So that is really exciting. I'm not going to go in person just because I'm still mainly sheltering for my partner. But I am still super excited to watch the live stream. And I might see if I can pick up a signed book at a later time. We'll see. And then for my schooling, I got invited to Beta Phi Mu, um, which is a honors fraternity for librarians that you have to get nominated into. And only 37% of like all graduating um librarians in the U.S. can get nominated for so that was super good and mainly it was really great not only just like the honor of it but uh, one of my favorite professors gave a little like lecture speech that was really uplifting especially as you know from my like previous clip that I've been struggling to find work and that has since not necessarily further dissuaded me because my other professor told me not to get dissuaded but she mentioned that, you know, it's a very soft market right now. So it's honestly normal. I'm having a hard time finding work. And uh, as far as my PhD uh, application goes, the main focus is for me to have like a very clear scope of research uh, that I would want to pursue. So that was both encouraging and discouraging just because on a practical level, I don't know how, not smart, but you know, getting a PhD in a field with a very soft market seems very risky to me. As far as books go, I have started to listen to many things. I started listening to Grown Ups, and I forget the author's name, but the main protagonist is really getting on my nerves. I know that that's silly to not like a book because of a main protagonist, but she seems just so, so very, very privileged that I, I have a hard time with it. And just her personality is not one that I get along with. So I'm having a hard time not wanting to DNF that one. 
And then I also started listening to The Farm, which is another one of the net galleys I had. Um, and that one, it is like, it's in this alternate world where there's surrogates that uh, both bear and take care of the children in this realm. Um, and our main protagonist that you meet at the start um, is this Filipino woman. I want to say Jean or Jenny. And just the way the family treats her that, um, you know, who, who she birthed their child and is watching their child is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know, I'm still going to continue carrying on with that one, but because of all the um, issues right now with conceiving and, you know, the rights to abortion and then to the whole... Um, formula shortage in the states it's very um of the moment weekend however i did finally go ahead and finish an untamed state by roxanne gay and as i was saying in a previous couple blogs i really um loved this i ended up giving it five out of five stars mireille mireille has been um, at the start of the novel she's visiting her architect father in haiti and she gets kidnapped and held captive for ransom and the book is separated into two parts, one that takes place during the 13 days that she is kidnapped, and the second half is following her after her kidnapping. And this is probably one of the more most realistic depictions of what it is to deal with like severe trauma that I've read. And I really liked the way that Roxane Gay tackled the topic without necessarily making it, because sometimes there's a certain shock factor involved, I feel like, in a lot of stories where the details to make the reader feel what the protagonist is feeling are very, very like detailed. And here, while it is definitely full of trigger warnings and it has a lot of explicit details that doesn't feel fluid or um you know exploitative and so I really loved this I really loved watching Mireille try to get out of her, her what happened to her and breed re entwine with herself because she had to separate herself from herself uh, and so I wanted to read to you two passages. There are many passages I could have read to you um, from section two, but these two um, are ones that I marked. And I don't feel are very spoilery in themselves. So the first is, I said nothing to my father. My father said nothing to me. His will is absolute and mine had become absolute too. Michael said nothing to anyone, but I knew what he was thinking, and I loved him for it. Our bags were brought to the car. As we walked out, my father cleared his throat. He called my name, but I didn't look back. He called my name again, louder. I tell myself I heard desperation in his voice. I may have heard what I wanted to hear. I kept walking, even though each step hurt more than the one before it. Michael and I sat in the back seat behind two armed men with our child between us. I wanted my father to run after us, to try to explain himself, to tell me he loved me, to tell me anything at all, but he didn't. He simply called out my name as if that were the grand geste I needed from him. And then there is a scene at the airport that really talks well about this disconnect that Mireille feels from herself after her, what she experienced. And the book states, We sat at the gate. Michael tried to talk to me, to reach me, but I was no longer there. 
I was no one again, surrounded by strangers, sitting next to the husband and the child of another woman. So yeah, I super recommend An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. Of course, has a ton of trigger warnings um, for sexual assault, violence, um, uh, this, the, the depersonalization, um, just, you know, very many trigger warnings, but very, very good. Um, if you don't feel up to this one, Roxane Gay has also written uh, a short story collection uh, called um, uh, Difficult Women. Here it is. It's like, I know I have it nearby. <laughs> Difficult Women. Um, and also IET, which I don't know, but it's on my shelf, but I don't know where. So, um, yeah, very much recommend her fiction writing. Then I have also continued to read The Sentence this weekend. I stopped reading it for quite a bit because it, the book starts to headbutt into 2020 and, um, you know, the pandemic and George Floyd's killing and things that feel so contemporary that sometimes I, uh, I really, really do avoid reading uh, books about the pandemic or about a a plague or virus because I I don't particularly lean into that at this moment. Um, but I am really still enjoying this. You get to um, continue to see the presence of other books and how the main protagonist like relates to her world through these books. I still enjoy seeing like her interactions, Cookie's interactions with her family, Hedda and her partner. And yeah, it's really good. I always really love Erdrich's writing. So, and yeah, I'll probably try to finish this this week. Then for audiobook rise, I'm still listening to a billion different things. I really want to DNF The Grown Ups, which is um, by Emma, Sh not Straub, Emma something. But I've, I've heard that the character, I like may or may not have watched a couple of reviews of the book in order to determine if I wanted to DNF it. And apparently the main protagonist doesn't grow at all, pa like past where she's at, basically where I am in the book. So I'm having a really hard time telling myself to carry on with that one. Um, and then I listened to a little bit more of The Farm, uh, which is the one with the surrogate um, kind of wet nurse dystopic world. And that one's also feeling slightly prescient and not necessarily what I want to read. So then I started another audiobook that is a Net Galley arc that I got back in like 2018 or 2017, who knows? <laughs> um, and that is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And this book, from what I remember, you have a character that wakes up in the body of very many different people at this one dinner party where there was a crime that was committed and you're trying to solve the crime as this character body jumps you know you get to understand the the story more and more the more bodies this character inhabits um, and right now I'm just at the very first uh, inhabitants with like Sebastian Ball, I think. Um, and it's eerie and it's it's well done so far. Very um, Agatha Christie-esque feeling. So that is good. And yeah, that is basically all I've been reading. Um, the other book that I would like to try to finish that's physical this week. Oh no, I lied. I've been reading another book. <laughs> The other book that I would like to finish this week that I started back in April is um, Shows Who You Are by Elle McNichol. Elle McNichol wrote the amazing, uh, very much recommend one of my favorite books of last year, A Kind of Spark. Um, Elle McNichols is an own voice, own voice is autistic author. And um, this book, Show Us Who You Are, uh, also has an autistic protagonist, um, Cora, and you follow her as she makes a new friend, Adrian, who has ADHD. And I was really, really loving it. Um, and then something really, really terrible happens. 
And I was frustrated because I was not anticipating this terrible thing to occur. And even though it has a really cool sub discussion of like tech and tech's ability to manipulate and like emulate human life, but like the dangers of that and the ethics in that. And um, so that's really cool, but I really didn't anticipate the upsetting thing that happens in this text. And I like stopped reading it um, after that happens. And that happened like a little bit over half way through. So kind of like the sentence, I just had a visceral reaction and was like, no. <laughs> And then the last book that I started this weekend, I started reading it this morning um, after I fed the boys and before Caitlin woke up. And that's Sky Kate. And it's by Vashnavi Patel. And it follows, it's a reimagining of the story of Sky Kate, um, who was this um, royal princess. Her mother gets banished at the start of the story and she confers with the gods to try to better understand why her mom was banished and to kind of cope with this. And she begins to have powers. And that's where I'm at with it right now. I'm kind of going into it blind and from a brief interview with the author that I had watched, the author talks about how Kaike has been um, has been depicted as like this evil stepmother character, I think, in um, the traditional, what's the traditional text? I read the, the Raman, Ramanyana, Ramanyana, but how she always felt like the story probably could have more to it to explain the motivations of Kaike. And um, yeah, that's what this is. And it's a chunker, but I've started reading it and the first 30 pages are really compelling. It's been a really long time since I read kind of a like high fantasy um, world building-y book. And my brain's been very much in the contemporary, so it's slow going for me, but it's really good. So yeah, that is all I have to tell you. Hey y'all, so it is Sunday, May 22nd. I have finished the sentence finally, so I am going to talk to you about the sentence. Um, but before I start doing that, I just wanted to take a second to talk about how um, today my favorite author, one of my favorite authors, Jason Reynolds, is in town. And I had been planning to watch the talk remotely um, because I'm still not going to go into a big crowd and risk uh, myself and my partner, especially my partner. And there was no hybrid option. And I'm really disappointed because my bookstore used to kind of tried to show that I was an ally to disabled people but this behavior after two whole years of doing hybrid events is you know not acceptable I mean it's forcing disabled people to continue to isolate themselves to keep safe and even when we're doing that we can't keep safe because people won't wear their bloody masks like in the grocery store or in places that we have to go to and people are still dying and so and I really don't think that Jason Reynolds would say no to a hybrid option um perhaps but I mean I've watched plenty of um you know virtual only book talks that Jason Reynolds has given so I very much doubt that and that would be the case. I finished the sentence by Louise Erdrich. I finished the sentence by Louise Erdrich and it was super lovely. I really thought that it did a great job in tying together like Tuki's whole like experience and what Flora ended up kind of almost representing because it was like all very meta with like the books that Tookie has read the 
books that influenced Flora and then like just the, the path that Tookie's life took. You have to continue to watch her interactions with her family, with H- Hedda. And then um, Jarvis had his little boy and it was really, really good. It's kind of hard to talk about because it in some ways is slightly disjointed, but it really did end up coming together. And um, at the end of the book, there is like several reading lists. So it might be a fun video in the future to, um, you know, read from the different reading lists. So, yeah, um, definitely if you're intrigued by the sentence by Louis Erdrich, um, in my, not the last vlog, but the vlog before it, I read passages from, um, the text to give you kind of a taste for the writing style and um I recommend that I was very impressed in Erdrich's ability to write on you know because she wrote really during the wrote about the pandemic during the pandemic and she handled it very sensitively and like you know I don't know I think it's really hard sometimes to write about things that are so prescient basically so that's that i am probably going to end the vlog here for real now hopefully i'll edit this and get it out i hope that everyone is doing as well as possible and i will talk to you in another video